Okay, so it's being recorded now. So last week we said the setup function alone and the loop function alone resulted in 444 bytes of use of memory. Do we, do we remember that? Not this one, but we resulted in 447 bytes. Yeah, yeah, people remember. So what we have now is the code that we have written today um, with the memory stuff. And I think that's where we left off last week. So basically, we want to look into that code and then see um, how much memory that it takes. So the 444 is there. And then on top of that, about um, we've got uh, 462 bytes of memory. That's how far we've been able to reduce the code. To. So now we note that 444 of this particular code is coming from the um, it's coming from just the loop and the setup function. And we remember last week that if we have this without that and there is nothing in there we simulate it we will get an error and then with the um setup and then the loop it wouldn't give us an error so we were in a safe zone now we're thinking is there a way that we can still reduce this code's memory further so we understand things up to this point but is there a way that we can work out um, some things so we understand i'm just going to um because I've shared this with you, hopefully if I make the changes, you will see the version I have. So um, this is up to the point where we have used registers um, just for your benefit when you are doing your re revision. So this is up to the point where we've used registers. I'll just say registers working when you are working on it, you know. Um, right, so let's go back to get a whole stuff up uh, to there. Now enable things. So we've got this. How many of us are familiar with this? So we have a function, function returns something. So we have a function, it returns a data type, and then we normally have this for C, C++ applications. How many of us have come across this somewhere um, before? If you have come across a code structure like this, raise your hand, let me know. If not, simply type no. Yeah, good, good. At least one of us have come, come across something like that before. So in C, C++, we call this the driver, the driver program. So basically, when it's just us, well, you look into the loop and blah, 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 to set up stuff, you have your variables being declared outside your loop function and uh, your main function and everything. But the main function is the driver program means whatever is in here, the compiler will um, compile it. So Solomon, um, if this is the first time you're seeing it, that's your intro into it. So we all know Arduino is C, C++. So it's just basically we need to create a driver program somehow. So as that we say we want to get rid of the void, the setup loop. So let's comment it out. We comment out the setup loop, the beginning and the end. I'll delete it in a minute. I just don't want to confuse it so much. So if we run, maybe we get an error. Maybe we won't. And then we do get an error. So we know it's expecting a setup. That's still not a problem. And we want to get rid of the loop. So we get rid of the loop and we get rid of the close brace of the loop and we run it again, obviously, if that produces an error, we should uh, still expect an error to uh, occur somehow. But what we are saying is since, since, um, since this was inherited from the AVR, the AVR, we could have a main, in, int main, int because the main function returns an, as a, as a, an integer, which is in this case, if it's successfully executed, it will return a zero, right, to the compiler. If it didn't successfully execute, then it will return a one. And normally what goes in between the main function, let's say some parameters such as if you want your code to run an external file or something like that, some, most of the time we uh, uh, put those parameters in there or a number of times that you want to execute, blah, blah, blah. We don't want to worry about it. So we leave the um, main part, uh, the inside, uh, we leave it as void. It's actually, um, it is allowed. So basically we choose to put the main bit of our code in here. Then we run it. I expect, um, let me get rid of this structure, right, to make it really easy for us to um, 
for us to understand. So what we have so far is we've got some global variables and then we are outside those global, <laughs> in the area of the global variables of precise directives, we also um, initiating the value of um, these ports in there. I expect something to go wrong when I run it because the code is being executed here, but we are doing some execution outside the main function as well. So let's try. So let's say we start simulation and we get an error. And what is it it's saying? It's, it's expected the qualified volatile. Volatile, I'll talk about volatile when I introduce you to um, interrupts. But most of you have done programming before and you know volatile means you want to, you want the compiler to sort of expect something to change um, during the execution process of it. And there's a significant significance as to um, the use of volatile and the main memory. I will I'll discuss that some, at some point or in a video for you to catch up with. Okay, so basically what I, I think we should do is move the bits that manipulates the um, pins as well, and then we move them down here. So we can actually keep the top two as uh, global variables because obviously they are just a um, button pin and LED pin. So let's try again and start the simulation. Now we have no errors, okay? Good thing is we have no errors, but the circuit, does the circuit work? If I press, nothing happened. If I press, nothing happened. And what may I, what am I doing wrong? Did I miss anything? I'm not sure. Let's figure it out. Do, do, do. By the way, if you have installed um, AVR Studio, you should be able to, you should expect to be able to execute um, this similar code um, for it to work in that environment. Let's hope I didn't move anything around when I was, oops, when I was messing with me. So let's do a bit of debugging. Things across, we have the button pin. Or B. B0, this is what I've shared with you. Let's hope the code was correct. So let's hope we've got the right number. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. And then obviously the same thing there being um, what we have there. Now, okay, so in our main function, the main function runs only once and really quickly. <laughs> so we, it, it means that remember previously we had a loop now we don't have a loop anymore so what we can do is put this in a forever loop as well so one way of executing a forever loop is let's say if we say well one because we say one means true right so while while true it means forever stay in a one so while one we expect this to happen so when we start Let's move this um, to a bit of cleaning. So we start, we've got our global variables. We initiate where we set the pins within the main, and then we move into a forever loop where basically we wait for, um, we detect the state of the switch, and then we act on it accordingly. Remember, we've done in the past, we have considered flow charts for decision making. So, and a um, flow chart for the loops as well. So, in your assignment, I do expect you to um, make use good use of flow charts in your um, to generate the code that you are working on. Okay. So, if I start my simulation, right? I expect if I press now, I expect it to work as it's working, and as you can see, it's working as it did before. Just some slight tweaks and the code that works before is at the bottom here. Let me put um, without register manipulation. So you've got the three code we've used in the class at the bottom um, in this particular one for you. Now we know the circuit work and we know before if I haven't closed the admin stuff and I can find it.
Um, guys, can we focus on what we have in the class for now? So at the moment, we are working on this. I've not used the SRAM code. Um, if you want to work on it by yourself in advance, I can disable it now in order not to create confusion. So let's go step by step according to the class so we can figure out things. Andres, I hope that that helps. Yeah, that that's is completely okay. I, I I just don't want to confuse you too much by, um, let's say, jumping ahead of the class. But you can work on it on the side. I'm now introducing Intman into the code. So what we have, and there's a purpose that I'm. There's a reason why I'm introducing each bit. So what we have here is um, we've got 462 by uh, for our previous code by using the for loop and the other things. What I want to do now is copy the code that we have now. We know it functions, it works the same way that we want. Then we put it into Arduino 462. We execute it now. It's taking its time. Now, boom, we've got. 152 bytes, which is even using 0% of the whole program storage. So I hope this helps and at least put things into perspective as to when you're writing your stuff. And we notice that it works perfectly well in the code as well, you know, where the scope to use now. So we're gradually moving away from normal Arduino programming and I would expect if you've done some brilliant stuff with the traffic light, LED, um, RGB, blah, 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 you can actually go back, duplicate those codes, and then create a smaller version or in terms of um, coding, you can create ones that use small size. Sorry? The code generate in Arduino. Before, before it was, um, when we started, we were around 892 and the thing is you've got a code now you can try it out yourself now um the one we did before this class we reduced to 460 something and now we have reduced it to 152 byte i wouldn't say this is the absolute best we can do i wouldn't say it's the absolute best we can do but um we can do a bit more um before if you are struggling with flow charts, um, almost all the all the videos, support videos, make the early ones. If you look, if you just watch support video on loops, you will find uh, on on um, conditional statement, you will see I start with a flow chart. Um, so you see some guidelines on flow charts in there. Simply, you don't have to. Um, it doesn't have to get a perfect voice, but it's very visual, so you can actually follow those ones. I do apologize for those recordings that were not good. Are we all are happy up to this point? Can we understand stuff up to this point? I hope I've not confused anybody. All we've done is just introduce int main into um, our implementation. 